first I recommended it, and then it was a pretty bad board assessment. So, the book stops with the board assessors. Well, I actually, according to Doyle Kelly, the book stops with the county commission because he said in the uh, Daily Times that we all admire that the assessors are responsible to the county commission. So, responsible what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 think you got the bad, I think you got the bad info there now. Yeah. <laughs> there are constitutional officers. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I'm going by what he was quoted to say in the newspaper. Let me quote it in error. It's possible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let me just point out something, John. Now, you talked about this impossible sales. Mm -hmm. If you look on page 20, mm -hmm. up there, uh, on the north end of County, now this is on Bowdale Road, and a lot of them roads up there, I don't know about the three, six, seven sales up there. Uh, That's right, those roads you don't know that are on the other side of the river from the area that I've been talking about. Yeah, there might be some still comparable sales up there. On the other side of the river. <laughs> Which wasn't taken into account at all. What about these sales down in your area near near class there? <laughs> <laughs> Due to the covenant, due to the, my, my taxes are going to go up 
$100. So I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm going to put that on the record, Gretchen, wherever you're at. I'm, not I'm over here now. <laughs> By the plug. <laughs> when I live on a dirt road a mile and a half or two miles long, when I look at what my land is assessed at and my neighbor on that, that one and a half mile dirt road or two miles, values range from $2,700 an acre to $7,000. I don't care if you use sales, if you use soil type. I, I don't. I don't see how. I don't see how that can be that big of fluctuation in land that is similar in a similar area, no matter what criteria you use. That's that's the reason I'm here is because I, I think there's a some sort of error kink in, in the evaluation system. I mean, if it was soil type, I would think that everybody in my area would have a similar evaluation. If it were sales, I would think there would be some, some, some similarities there, but it's just all over the place. It would be good to go back through that, but there's no way that we can answer uh, that question without looking at it specifically, and we can't do that here. That's why we urge you to come to that. Well, I, I have, but, but, but. I mean, if this is an evaluation countywide, then if we're using sales, then in an area it would seem logical to me. And granted, I ain't you know I ain't real smart. But if we're going to use sales, that there would be a similarity, something comparable. If we're going to use soil type, that that would be comparable. Well, if you got a oh, when you go from twenty seven hundred dollars an acre to seven thousand, and it's in the same area, I just struggle. Mm -hmm. to figure out how that makes sense to me. There again, I'm not complaining about the totally. taxes going up because totally. they're not, but I just don't understand and that's how the evaluation is done. Have to look at with and anybody who's come in and you haven't, like you said, you haven't gotten to speak with D yet? Or well, I have to go with another sign. I would go. Uh, I would have to that y'all hired from wherever. You know, many different values on the same dirt road. You can't answer a specific question without looking at specific issues. And that makes sense. No, no, that issue is probably, that makes some sense. you got to look at the specific cases before you can make a determination. And I keep hearing it's not general. But it is general because I've heard him, I've heard several people talk about having property with similar soil types, with similar sizes, in the same geographical area, that should meet all the same criteria. So it's a general thing. We're all complaining, I think, about some of the same things. What I want to do, and I was about to say before I forget about it, when you go up there, if you want to be in. No, 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 I'm talking about gentlemen. When you go up there, if you go up there, let me know. I want to be there. I've I'm already been. been. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm still. Let me do something. I think we all had a little discussion that I think everybody's getting the message that you need to file an appeal. You go through the appeal process. Mike, you stated a while ago that you served on the Board of Appeal. And, and I served on it a number of years ago. And I think you need to give people some guidance as to how you need to prepare when you go before that board. I'm already doing that. Yeah, I'm already doing it. Well, I'm going to put it out this way. You need to do what Jerry, put the data together like Jerry has talked about. Find out what a property in your area, you find any difference. Them if you go into before the board, uh, for the board of equalization and you just go in there and, and, and with the attitude that, that this is just too high, it ain't worth that, you ought not be taxed with it. I mean, you're, you're not going to come out very well. But if you go in there and you present some data that this is properties in the neighborhood, this is this much per acre, this is, and, and point out these differences, so I think you. Somebody asked me, is it a conflict of interest? For you to be telling me how to, how to behave in front of the board of tax equalization, and I don't consider it that way. It's public information anyway, so I got no problem at all saying when you go before the BOE, this is the way you need to handle yourself, because I want the decision to be right. So call me. How do we get a decision? Um, what Jerry called the problem with the system. What John called the general issues. Now, Doug G told me, well, the tax assessors couldn't address those. The Board of Equalization could, not just specific properties, but these 
systematic general issues within racism. You've both been on the board of equalization. Is that true? Can the board of equalization address these general and systematic issues? Board of equalization deals with each case individual. Right. So it doesn't board a uh, board can 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 make a change or the board can leave it as it is. So oh, if, if you don't agree with if you don't if you're not satisfied then you've got the court. But, but they wouldn't fit, fix everybody on Jerry's road. If, if Jerry comes in and says, hey, like we shouldn't be right. between two and seven, we should all be at three and a half, and they go, yeah, you should be at three and a half, they're not going to fix everybody else at the same time. Can't do it. No, no they, can only, they can only adjust what's under appeal, the case that's before them. So we're going to have to go to court to fix this, is what you're saying. No. First off, was uh, you got before the board of equalization. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you deal with it, now uh, the courts, uh, the order of the state, that there's some action about making these adjustments applicable, and give it, give it, but it's not, I don't think it's more, that's not going to happen. <coughs> so, as far as the appeals process goes, there's nothing in the appeals process. Now, that's just the appeals process. You can always go to court for any and everything. But as far as the appeals process goes, uh, well, there, there's nothing that will address everybody's at one time. It would only be, you know, per property. What if everybody appealed to the court at the same time? And we would handle all of those prop those cases individually. Yeah. Unless, there, no, unless there's a way of putting it well, together. He that's said important. to the, he said, deal to the court. Is that right? Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's what I'm paying for. Yeah. 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 Well, I got a question. Yeah. Yeah. What I hear. Well, we hear that. To be honest, I really think it's going to be apparently uninterested in the general one. And the matter is, my daughter has got to spend $56 million on a new suit. Let me bring up my thing one more time. I still don't understand if I, if I uh, evaluation went up so much, and that is it says on the uh, notice we got, what by, well, I'll be paying tax. And it's just about the same. I said, I'm happy with that. But what's going to happen if the village rate changes? Something we have is almost double valuation. What's going on? Is it going to all of a sudden double my taxes? Or what, what, what are we going to have? What's going to be better than that? Well, that's. that's but that's what we're waiting on right now is to get the get the digest so that we can determine where we need to set the village at. We've already presented our budget. We've already adopted our budget. We know how much revenue that we need uh, and what we plan to have. So we're going to be setting our village based on the digest in order for us to receive that amount of money that we need for our budget. So we're done with that huge and. Boy, I mean, our budget this year um, is roughly twelve million dollars less than what it was last year. Yeah, same way they said they're gonna charge me home. Yeah. <laughs> so it all depends. I mean, we're waiting on these. We're waiting on these evaluations and all this to get squared away so that we can actually get the digest so that we can set the millage. There may be some possibilities as we kind of move through this thing. We there, there's a probability that we may have to go to the Superior Court and ask the Superior Court to be able to collect taxes on last year's values at Millersville. Because if we can't get it all back here in time, we can't wait to move forward and not have our tax monies coming in. So we may have to ask for that to be able to, to, uh, to, be able to continue our revenue coming in. So there's a lot of moving pieces right now until this issue gets gets resolved and these uh, these uh, appeals are heard and we get it down to a certain percentage, I guess, that's acceptable so we can move forward with it. So we're waiting on that. I mean, that's where we're at. So you do have some incentive to find some way to see this thing resolved? We'd like to see it resolved, yes. But there again, we also understand we understand the mass issue that's involved and the task that the tax assessors has with trying to do a revow on the on the rural property along with the commercial and industrial properties as well. Go ahead. Do you know whether or not if, if an appeal is made on uh, properties in the conservation reserve, if 
that goes into the uh, percentage that I don't know. It, I, I don't, it, uh, I don't, you know about the value of the steel? Yes, it'll be the difference between the return value on the property, which would be if any of you made your return on the property this year, um, if you made it in person, or more than likely it was done by last year's value. If you didn't make a return, you paid the taxes on last year's value, you accepted last year's value. It won't be based on the conservation use value, it'll be based on the fair market value that that we have on file. So it'd be the difference between the fair market value we have on and the prior year's fair market value. All right, so folks like most of us here uh, on, on your board got the property in conservation reserve. So if we go appeal these values, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, would that would go into the percentages, uh, the value in dispute. Value in dispute mm -hmm. that would when really it's not going to impact one way or the other, uh, the revenue of the county would be, or, or the digest of the county would be taxed. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's going to be based on that. <clears throat> that's, that's the, that's, you know, as far as I know on that formula, that's the way it's calculated. Felicia, do you know anything different on that? That's the way. That's not her fault. <laughs> 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 but she deals with it too, just like that. We all work together to get this familiar uh, way and the value industry has to be down before um, I can submit the digest to the state. So that's why I said Before somebody calls us getting to an end, uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come, uh, even though I was sort of railroaded into it, but I got the gist. But, but, um, I voted for the revaluation because it hadn't been done in so long. So I may be, I'm a freshman assessor, and I may be a one-term assessor. Uh, but the reevaluation the re had to be done. There were too many, way too many differences that shouldn't have been there in a way. It needs to be uniform for everybody. It's just like Silas said, keeping up with the residential and not keeping up with the commercial, for instance means that the residential is carrying more. The budget, the county's budget is not going to change. If you get a break, somebody's got to pay. Some little old lady in a little house somewhere is going to have to pay. That's what I say. It's probably not for a couple of cents. But, but it all needs to be done as fairly as possible. It can't all be done at one time without making mistakes, which is why I keep saying come to the office and let's go over your piece of property specifically and answer all your questions because it can't be done here. I mean, let me say this, but that was even wanted to be here. Uh, I heard the rim and didn't hear from anyone, but uh, I, in my judgment, uh, your county lawyer uh, uh, went to the extreme on being safe. I, I just do not think having all three of the assessors here would be in violation of the uh, open record track. I agree uh, with I agree with you completely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the recommendation would be that if all three of these guys uh, was to show up at the Lions right after the football game, that was in violation of open beat that. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it just, that, that's just that. <laughs> Uh, you need to get that changed in the legislature. Need to get spelled out because I don't want our county commissioners to show up. I walk in the office and I say, "How many is on the floor?" So it's right under ten thousand. I actually agree with Bill. Mike and Bill Slaughter. About conservation use, another thing is you may be under conservation use, but often your neighbors are not. When the valuation is raised like this around you, that gives them more incentive to sell out for subdivisions and houses, which ends up with development all around you, where you start getting the kind of thing I get all the time because of the subdivision that's been grandfathered in next to my West Field. Now, do you have anything to do with us here? That, you know, I do a prescribed burn and somebody in the subdivision calls the county fire department on, on you know, And eventually it's gonna get to the point where you may have a conservation easement but, and you may like farming or forestry, but it may just become impossible to continue because of this. Because somebody developed a subdivision on their own land? 
Can you sell some land for some I did not. I don't know where you got that. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> and I answered it. <laughs> uh, tell you all, though, I, I think a couple of you have said that you haven't been contacted back or anything. You know, we, all, we do have an awful lot of appeals coming in. Um, so they will be contacting you. It might not be immediate. So if you do come into the office and you're told that somebody can't see you, you know, ask to go ahead and try to schedule or sign up for uh, scheduling an interview or scheduling a, a meeting. Uh, because I know that uh, Dee, for one, when she's dealing with you know, anybody that's coming in about the rural land changes, she does have a sign-up sheet for meetings because she's just so backlogged and you can't ever tell how long it's going to be. It could be 20 minutes, it could be an hour and a half that she's got to speak with somebody. Um, so if you would, you know, just make sure that you read, you know, that you, whenever you give us, when you do appeal, you write your phone number on there and do request to speak with somebody. I got one other question before we get away from here. Did this outfit that y'all had come in and do this work on these uh, farm land, did they change any of the classifications of that land from swamp land to forest land or that type of stuff? There was some that was that was changed. Um, and uh, then there was also some where, you know, our staff was looking through and, and made changes based on, you know, something where they wrote out and saw something. So I couldn't say who did each one. Uh, but there have been found a couple of instances where some stuff was in mass changed to woodlands and the table it ended up on the property itself and uh, it was actually open or vice versa. So that would be something that we could find in this. Is know, there any recourse against the, against the company that we hired for the mistakes that they made? I don't believe that they made any mistakes, but that's that's me. Mistakes been made, but uh, but this would be something that uh, I mean, sorry, I wouldn't say they didn't make any mistakes. Everybody in a project like this, you're going to have mistakes. Right. But overall, I believe we got you know, the problem. But I thought the, it should be uniform. You know, that's what that's what well, everybody's but, saying. Should be a uniform, a uniform across the board deal, and it's it's everywhere. Well, and without somebody us, made without us look, sitting down and looking at what you know, without us looking at what you're bringing up, I can't tell you if it is if there is a lack right. of uniformity or not. You know, I mean, we'd have to look. I know it's crazy to say, well, I have to look at case by case basis to see if there was uniformity, but you do because you're going to have well, open land versus woodland. You're going to have differences in acreage. You're going to have differences in. Uh, you know, is it was it on small acre track side? Was it on large acre track side? You know, yeah. Silas, um, on these appeals, will all of them be have to go to the BOP? No. Uh, you know, as far as the appeals go, um, you know, it's up to the appellant whether or not you know. If, if we look at it and we see there's some changes that need to be made, um, we'll make the change. Then we'll send a 30 day notice, and then the appellant would have 30 days. To decide whether or not they're going to go ahead and go on to the board of equalization or not. Um, if there, if we see there's no change, we'll send a letter that says there's no change, and they'll be forwarded immediately to the board of equalization. There are two other options though that I'd uh, like to bring up. That uh, you've got arbitration, um, and you also have straight to superior court. Those are options as well. I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head if if hearing officer will work for any of these properties. Um, you know, it, it kind of depends on, it all depends on what your value is on the property and it's home state or not. Um, so there, but that's all on the appeal form, those different options. Um, arbitration will, you know, can cost you some money because you've got to pay for an appraisal and, stuff and pay filing fees. Uh, court, you know, that would be whatever attorney's fees you would incur or anything like that, you know, filing fees. Or sorry, uh, and then, um, yeah, so the reason why most people go to the BOE route is because it's the, it's the simplest route. Um, and just like anything else, so you always have the end remedy of superior court. Um, so. Hey, Silas. Um, it, was, it was said that um, a great deal of the parcels were sent double bills or something to that effect. Uh, did, would that have anything to do with some of the values they're talking about tonight? No, sir. No, sir. What that was was that was... Um, on the the lighting districts, it had uh, duplicated that that fee 
his charge oh, right, it is yeah it was duplicated uh, in in that uh, estimate of taxes and that, that's what that was that was going to be what, 39 to 59 or the year ago so, somewhere around there. You know, it's about 77,000 parcels, something like that. Something like that, yes, sir. And a few words, Alice, explain lighting districts. Uh, that's the, uh, uh, that's going to be the, there are a few areas where those folks have been brought in uh, and the uh, county pays and shares the expense uh, for those developments to install the lighting and then the lighting being paid. I think this county paid ahead of time for them. Yes. And then they pay back some and of the costs. they it back. So we're a year in the rears pretty much. On most of them, we're trying to get that corrected over time. But all that is, is basically if you've got a subdivision that's got lighting in it, then the, the county is responsible for the lighting. But then the folks in that subdivision are assessed for the a fee for the lighting, and that's one special lighting district. And, uh, so but that's a fee, that's not tied to that, that's just a straight fee. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's getting pretty late. Uh, I just want to say we appreciate y'all being here. Thank you, sir. I know it might not have been a pleasant, but you get very important. I think everybody needed to hear it, you know. I mean, you get these things, and it was a shock, you know, sticker shock. And, uh, but, you know, there is an appeal process. Yeah. And I did bring brochures that um, just taxpayer information that explains the appeal process and the different exemptions if anyone would like. Right. right over here, we'll put them on that table at the end and uh, we'll get you up. But we just want to thank everybody, Bill. Anybody have any questions? <laughs>